Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is CBRE Group, ticker CBRE. This company is in the real estate management and development industry. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of the business and its business quality. Let's dive on in. The first thing is the company has a business market cap of $23 billion and an EV of $23 billion, so it appears to be relatively unleveraged. So this company provides commercial real estate services and investment company worldwide, three segments, advisory services, global workplace solutions, and real estate investment segments. They provide strategic advice and execution to owners, investors, occupiers of real estate. Um, they're under this CBRE Capital Markets brand. Um, the Global Workplace Solutions offers facilities management, project management, and the real estate investment segment provide investment management services. So this is clearly a company in the kind of like financial services industry focused on real estate is what it looks like. It looks like a services business. At first, I thought seeing real estate, this was going to be simply a real estate business that was very asset heavy, but it might be pretty asset low. And hopefully we can find out more in the further description here. So it looks like for two years of the last 20, they had losses. That was in 2003 and in 2008. 2008 makes sense with the mortgage crisis, but otherwise they made profits in all the other years. However, there is some cyclicality here. You see that they you know, had 2% return on invested capital in 2002. They get up to 14% in 2005 before dropping to negative 28% in 2008. Um, they had basically break even in 2009. Um, so 2002, 2009, between and 2008, between those years, you kind of have four years without any real profitability of the business. Um, but otherwise, you were profitable in the other 16 years. However, what's interesting is really the business since 2010. You, it seems to be pretty stable and growing. These numbers are increasing over time. So you've gone from 5% return on invested capital in 2010 to 14% return on invested capital in 2021. So these numbers have grown over time. You're now into the double digit range. You did drop some in 2020. That's to be expected with the pandemic. But otherwise, you're operating in this 13, 14% range, which is actually really, really nice numbers. Um, you're below that for a lot of the past decade, so it's kind of hard to rely on that. If we look at the 10-year median, you're at 9.5%. But if we can keep up the recent history, it looks really, really good. When you go down here to return on equity, we can see that every year for the last decade, it's been double digits. You only have one year below 15%, so I really, really like to see that. It does mean there is some leverage in this business. We'll have to take a look because it didn't appear like it before. Um, but overall, it's looking really, really strong from that business quality. And just to be aware that there is some cyclical potential in some recessionary years like 2020 and 2008. They do face some impact from that. Now, again, these 10-year medium return, all these numbers look really good. If this PE is real at PE of 12, that tends to be pretty cheap. Um, an average business worth about a PE of 15. And so if this is a an, at least an average business, then it looks like it's undervalued. And at least from here, it looks like an average business. An average business tends to you know, make money during bull markets and, and maybe lose money during recession. So it seems like an average business with some potential for high quality if it's found a way to avoid these downturns. 2020 was a recessionary year and they made a profit the last recessionary year in 2008 they lost money so if they can turn around and, and have a six percent return on invested capital in their down years instead of negative 28 percent then this actually starts to look like a really really good business in the future um, these revenue growth numbers look really good. You can see they're growing at double digits almost every year. 10%, 10%, 26, 26, 20, 67, 14. So you have the 7% growth in 2017. You only have a point, negative 0.3% growth in 2020. So that was actually a really good performance considering. Um, so you like to see that. And then you followed up with 16% growth in 2021, continuing this growth trajectory. They've gone from $6.5 billion in revenue to $27.7 billion in revenue in 2021. 16% growth rate over the last decade. That's a very, very strong number. Now, you also see the asset growth at 12%. So they've been growing their assets substantially slower than revenue, which is why you're seeing this growing return on invested capital over time. If you continue a trend like this, it's going to be a very, very attractive business in the future because these numbers would continue to grow from 14%. You're going to continue to get higher and higher returns. And so you're going to be able to grow to maybe the most recent numbers are going to keep bringing that up. And then the 10-year median return is going to go to 14%. And then your return on equity is going to be in this 20% plus range. So I really like to see that. And this is what's driving that free cash flow going at 26% and EPS growing at 22%. So overall, this is looking really, really good. You see these EPS growing from a dollar per share to $5.40 per share. So you're 5Xing your EPS over the course of a decade. 
Anytime you can 5X your earnings in a decade, you're going to be a very strong performer. So, I mean, think about what that does from here. So, if you're at $5.40 today and you 5X that, then you're going to be at like $27 per share in a decade and they're trading for $71. So, you're you're basically three times what you might be in a decade and then you just get to figure out what multiple would you have in a decade if that is sustainable. I'm not saying it is. It's highly unlikely they can then, you know, 4X their revenue again and then they're talking a $100 billion business, but you'd really have to understand, you know, what the total addressable market is for something like this. If you're liking this video so far, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Your likes tell the YouTube algorithm that you are enjoying this content and help spread it to more people. Your subscription will let you know when I upload new videos so that you you can follow along as I work through every company in the S&P 500. Now, as we go to the income statement, we can potentially learn a little bit more about this business. One thing that's interesting is the cost of goods sold is actually pretty high. You know, you're able to take your revenue up four to five X, but your gross profits only up two to three X. That's, that's important to keep aware of. So you're not capturing, you know, an extra 25, $20 billion in gross profit. You're only capturing about three and a half billion dollars in gross profit higher over the course of the decade. However, they were able to use that because they grew the two and a half billion, you know, three and a half billion dollars in gross profit, but they only increased their SGNA by two billion then you're able to really grow, you know, a whole nother billion dollars in operating profit that basically triples that number. And then you're able to take it to a 6x on that net income line because of that. Although, with that said, you see this big $893 or $893 million non-operating income is kind of causing this number to be overstated. I mean, if you just pull that number off, you're down to a billion dollars in net income instead of $1.8 billion. So, that that means that this five dollars and forty eight cents number is just too high. It's not realistic, and 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 so something along the three to four dollar range is probably a more realistic assessment of what this business is performing because this is overstating that performance. Now you need to know what this number is. Is this repeatable? You, I do see non operating income in a lot of the years here, so some of that might be repeatable, but clearly not all of that is. So that's a big concern for me. I'd also see the shares outstanding increasing over time, um. So you are being diluted a little bit here. So when we think about the fact that you're being diluted, you know, that really plays into what does this mean for us and how do we how do we take that into account? Now, um, it, it makes it harder to assess and makes it a little bit less attractive because that's distorting all of these numbers here that are covered on the first page are all being distorted by this last year number. And so this EPS growth of 143% isn't real. Um, and that, that's a little disappointing for this assessment. Now, if we go to the balance sheet, you can see you have accounts receivable basically growing a lot of cash and equivalents. Um, Goodwill grows in a lot of years. So it looks like they're making steady acquisitions over time. Intangible assets are growing over time. So despite growing these intangible assets, you're still doing quite well. Um, your PP&E isn't that high. I mean, your PP&E is you know, 1.8 billion and your total assets is 18 billion. Um, you basically are running a bunch of cash here um, you know, maybe this is float almost. I'd have to really understand what they're doing with this business, um, to make an assessment, but the entire structure here looks pretty good. You have really little debt, 1.3 billion in debt, but you have basically that amount in cash. Um, you got some capital leases, <sighs> accounts payable, some deferred earnings, all this looks fine. Um, cash flow. So you see some stock-based compensation, 50 million growing to 185 million in stock-based compensation over time. I don't know why there's so much stock-based compensation. If you think about what the stock-based compensation is on that compared to the net income, you're saying your stock-based compensation is, you know, 20% or 15% of your business. Um, that's a that's a lot of stock-based compensation, especially because it's probably more based upon the stock price. Um, it's why you're diluting over time. Despite having buybacks each and every year, you're still growing your share count. Something to be aware of. Um, let's look at our overview. So I think this company is really, really interesting. I would want to know more. It wouldn't go on my watch list, yes, because I, I don't understand these downturns. I don't understand why they lost money in 2003. I don't understand why they lost money in 2008. And I don't understand what happened in 2012 and 2021. So what I would do next is I would read the 10K. I would try and understand their business model. What is this non-operating income? Um, what is reliable return on invested capital? 
Um, and do I expect further declines in the future during recessions or do I expect future recessions to still be something like 2020 where I continue to make money? It's just not as a high amount. If that's the case, if we roll forward, you know, to 2029 and we look back at the last 20 years and you have 20 straight years of profitability, your return on invested capital is sitting at 15 to 20% and you have no losses in that time frame. this company's gonna look really, really good. It's gonna be a business you want to own. I mean, you think about this price to sales 0.8, you know, the sales that they have over this market cap, when you earn these types of returns on equity is gonna set you up really strong for future stock performance. So this could be a company that makes a lot of money in the future, but you really wanna understand, understand the business and all, why they lost money here. Are they likely to repeat that in the future recessions? Um, but otherwise, very interesting company. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe so that you can get updates as I upload future videos on this show. Thank you for listening. And until next time, stop paying fees, start building wealth.